the principal counselor at Care Corner. Let's welcome Bettina to the show. Hey! Hey! Engaging with youth, right? What are the most common or prominent mental health issues that you see? Anxiety, depressive symptoms, body image. So that's quite a common one. Are you okay? Desire is done that. Yeah, yeah. 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 In today's episode, we are thrilled to welcome a very special guest. With over 15 years of counselling experience, she is the principal counsellor for Ed Care Corner and a very passionate advocate for youth mental health. Let's welcome Bettina to the show! Hey! Hey! Can I start with asking you, what is something that you, you face in your line of work in the mental health epidemic that we see in young people today? What is something that you think people not of that generation don't see? I think number one would be challenges of being on the in the online mm. <laughs> universe, you know, where everything is tech. Because all these are not visual, you're not physical, right? Yeah. So there are many, many things happening on the internet that we don't have a concrete sense of in that sense. Like a lot of the youth nowadays, like one of the major issues is bullying, right? And no, now we, we not only have to deal with the like in school people bully me, at least that's a physical person mm. who I know I can complain about. Um, versus on the internet, right? Mm. Where it's like user Anonymous. 2000, yeah, yeah and, and, and it five. can be 2000 of them. Yeah, you know, and, and there's no face to the name. We have mm. no idea what's going on. People can say whatever they want. People feel like they have the right to say anything they want, mm. you know, without consideration because it's privacy is darkness, right? That's, yeah. you, it's not identifiable. So I think that that is a lot of challenge that happens actually by themselves on the phone, mm. you know, unless you have a good support or you have like, you know, parents kind of involved and you share some of these things. If not, you cannot see it, ma. Right. Mm. You know, like bullying, it's not physical. I mean, physical, I punch you. Okay, yes. Mm. You know, uh, you can see the bruise. Right, but all this is the emotional bullying, the like, say, the cancel culture, yeah. these mm-hmm. things that happen. And it's twenty four seven. There's no safe space. Yes, like there's if you no go to school space. last time, you go home. Home is your safe space, your family. But then this one is constantly online. You it's just true. So yeah. this is something that coming. our generation face as well. But what you are saying is that they are ex- they are being exposed to it without a ramp up and too young too soon. Yes, I think that sometimes the safeguards are not in place. You know, hasn't there hasn't been education or maybe handles around that as mm. well. Mm. Yeah, that I think also make it more challenging. La, yeah, right? or the building of resilience la, to yeah. get bullied by one or two persons first. La. <laughs> yeah, I mean, ideally. Yeah, just for bullying. <laughs> 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 yeah, and, and, and I guess the other one maybe has to do with kind of like the changing world conditions in terms of like the the uncertainties that come up now, you know, because of this, the, the pandemics, the wars, the uncertainty of the future, mm. rising costs. I think that's something that with some of like our uh, older youths who are like in their late teens, mm. early 20s, they, it, it really is a major concern. You know, how am I ever going to buy a house? How am I ever going to afford, you know, living? Mm. What, what, what is it going to cost me, right? To be able mm. to just like settle down. So yeah. I think these are certain challenges and just the uncertainty can actually be really scary. La, triggering a lot of the anxiety yeah. or fear, you know, whereas, I think maybe previous generations, the focus was like lower on the like Maslow's hierarchy. So food, shelter, mm. we want to have stability. You know? right. Whereas now, I think with this generation, we've grown up having this, in a sense, like a very stable environment, having a lot of some of these resources. Right. So we go higher, we look at like self-actualization, right. you know, like relationships. Um, not, not to say that those weren't important before. Yeah, but um, there were more pressing issues. Yes, before. there were more pressing issues, right? If I cannot feed myself, I cannot yeah. find a shelter under my head, then obviously I'm going to be preoccupied with those issues. I'm not going to be thinking about like, what would I like my life to be like? Right. Yeah. So you brought up the Maslow hierarchy of needs. Would you then say that this is almost a developed country problem? In a sense, yes. Or postmodernism problem? Yes. I mean, I, I do think that that is part of it because mm. the theory is that basically you want to hit the lower levels and then when as you as those needs are met, then you get mm. higher up and you're looking, you have higher aspirations in that sense. Yeah, yeah. Right? Then and how? How does one fix that? <laughs> you, know, you know, it's like, do we turn back time and go back to poverty, for example, yeah. or instability of life? I don't think it's a yes or no question. Mm. I think it's about sort of maybe deciding what is important to us and what we want. I have visited third world countries on a mission trips and you know they just look very happy they're just playing with their five stones yeah. and they're working every day and I think there's a certain 
there's a certain beauty around just they that's the world they know yeah. and that's the kind of life they live and not to say that there's they don't have high expressions i believe that that they are as well but there's also a certain contentment and joy that comes when i see some of these kids you know like in the developing countries yeah. but yeah. i mean we won't go back so i think the question then is moving forward how do mm. we want to live our lives because uh i think that's that's what we want we need to decide now So mm. right now right having engaging with youth right what are the most common or prominent mental health issues that that you see the majority of our clients are more with the mood disorder so anxiety depressive mm. symptoms uh, uh. Uh, we do have certain issues like body image so that's quite a common one there are some with like OCD or sexuality issues so mm. i think various challenges lah in that sense are they like expected at this age like we all go through it at some point and is this just the common stuff that you question when you are a youth in accordance with developmental theory mm. like we all go through that but i think also as i interact with um you know my clients my friends kids uh, we realize that you know what you last time as a 14 year old like 10 20 years ago would really look quite different like 14 year old now would look quite different just because of the exposure maybe if you didn't have tv if you didn't didn't have like 24/7 access to the internet yeah. your reality and how you see the world would look quite different right so i do feel like to a certain extent also perhaps in the past when we were 14 and we were out that maybe we would we just went on undiagnosed and today with social media and comparison mm. there's a lot of self diagnosis going on yeah. and there's also more people seeking therapy than getting diagnosed and then feeling like a a non problem might become a problem you know no, no, no i just had this conversation with yeah, yeah, just yeah, now yeah, yeah. we actually no problem but then right we are curious so we go and try therapy correct, for example correct. then realize <laughs> oh shit yeah, yeah, i yeah, really yeah, have yeah. a lot of problems it's like, like oh my god it's my grandfather's fault you know <laughs> yeah i think the difficulty comes because now there's a chance that if you are 10 year old scrolling through tiktok somebody tell you you better plan for your retirement now you better like that they have to stress about these things at such a young age they are not as developed yet yes. but they are already worrying about like adult problems like so then is there actually an appropriate age a child should then be exposed or start to need to think about certain things yeah so there's the exposure issue right i mean I think therefore we cannot run away right like nobody is going to stop the internet on stop scrolling so then it's really i mean if you're a younger person then there is a need as as, as parents for parents to kind of like also educate lah right so if you look at your example a 5 year old or like a 10 year old looking at or oh, retirement i must invest right and i mean it it can there can be important lessons but is to be able to say you know this is not something that you need to worry about at the moment but uh that is just that is part of the reality yeah. so in a sense it i mean exposure is not necess- it's not a good good or bad thing right it has its pros it has yeah. its cons imagine the 10 year old by land now Wow. <laughs> the deal is settled. <laughs> That's right. I saw a meme recently on like it's just a baby like sleeping. I say this Start is a now. picture of me during nine nine two wasting my time sleeping not buying land. <laughs> <laughs> I think when we look at the concept of exposure as well, right? One of the good things that uh, came out in that sense um, of COVID was that uh, so we were really struggling, and therefore the lens got shown. It's almost like the limelight, you know, like yeah. it got shown on mental health. Then people start to oh maybe I have this that that exposure lah, mm. right? So I think yes, we, on one hand we take in certain things. Then I think the importance of that second layer of being able to, you know, have to. Talk to someone, a friend, a family, um, a mental health professional, to kind of mm. discern whether, like, actually, is this true? You know, it's like doctors. They talk about when they go through med school, then they become hy- hypochondriacs because they read about all their symptoms and anything they have, every one of them. Mm. Yeah. So, so in a sense, that's the exposure of the internet, right? You have all this information at your fingertips, you know, and and it's true. Like young people are more educated. They'll come in. I suspect I got this, this, this. You know. Then we have a conversation. Are they often right? Yeah. There is a difference between the presence of some of these symptoms and a full blown like mental Diagnosis. health disorder. Okay. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like a depressive so, episode and actually having depression. Yeah, or you could have depressive symptoms but it might not be diagnosed as a depressive episode oh, or, okay, okay. or or major depressive episode. Right, right. What's I mean? the difference ah? Sorry, yeah, I always wanted yeah. to ask. How do I know, do we know whether I'm just big sad or I'm depressed? Uh, uh. <laughs> big sad. Uh, <laughs> okay, so <laughs> fix that. So depressive symptoms, right? Sometimes we lose a pet, we lose a friend, changes in our jobs, we feel really down, we feel like we're okay. not performing. So like sad, okay, maybe big sad, you lose a girlfriend, something very precious to you. Okay. Uh, so then we look at sometimes the duration, whether there is a precipitating triggering factor. Okay. Right. So th- so the if there is, then it's understandable. Like somebody like, obviously you'll be sad, right? Yeah. 
you know. But if there's no rhyme or reason and you just, you know, you're just like that, there's been, we, we, we do a screening and we find that actually there's nothing that's happened. And then just suddenly I've become like that. There is an extended period of time and it's fairly consistent. Right. Uh, then that's when we would encourage them, maybe if you're interested to get a diagnosis. What then is an extended period of time? With different disorders, yeah. it will be different. range Two weeks, months or years? Months. No, la, not years. La. January, not years. Yeah. Weeks, ah. I have big set for weeks, eh. <laughs> Are you okay? He died also done the admit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I mean, I okay. Yeah. Yeah. If you're starting to wonder, am I big set? Or oh, like really, mm. really like a mental health disorder? Um, then I would say, you know, already start that help seeking process. So I, I do counseling and I tell mm. my clients, I'm like, you know, a lot of the time, Okay, to be fair, it's better now, but I feel like a lot of the time people come in when three quarters of the house is burning, like on fire already, right. right? So by the time you come in, we need to like put out the fire and then we need to like put everything out, rearrange. There's a lot of damage done. Mentally? Then, uh, yeah, You're like, talking about in, purely in, from a mental in, point of view. Internally, la, right? right? So okay. I think that's why I firmly believe in like the prevention and education part because when you come in, you see a smoke, right? If you're, It's like if you're driving a car and the red, the red light comes on, you're not going to, uh, well, ignore it lah. Maybe it's yeah. nothing, you know? So what are the <laughs> warning signs you think that... It's like the guilty. Yes, sorry. <laughs> so what do you think are some of the warning signs that people are ignoring? I think one of the major factors also, it starts to interfere with my, my daily activity. So that's when you know already, it's, it's probably like, it's not just something that you're going to be able to brush Right. right, but some people will still push through, ma. Yeah. Right. So, so I uh -huh. think like loss of appetite, loss of motivation, <laughs> interest. Me. Yeah. yeah. Mr. Push through. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, why? Uh, why are you having a Purposely going to this episode. <laughs> if you are googling like symptoms of burnout, symptoms of depression, yeah. it probably means maybe you should just go and talk to someone. It doesn't necessarily mean it will end up in a diagnosis, right? Mm. right? It's just, I want to know whether this is really something that I need to be concerned about, whether I need to take measures or, or put steps in place to help myself. Like, if you had a big growth on your, like, on your leg, right? You're not going to just, oh, maybe you'll go away, maybe you'll go away. Like, we, oh, we tend to- Oh, you asked my dad. Yeah. Well, okay, yes. I mean, of course, there are people who tend to be like, let's just deny it, uh, yeah. who are a bit more in denial, but that's what we are wanting for people to do. La. So just now you mentioned about realspace.sg. Yeah, so actually, uh, realspace.sg is uh, it's a site where they have they host, uh, so there's a first touch point service, mm -hmm. so that's uh, Quest, which is a community outreach team. Mm. Uh, they also have resources to the com community in intervention teams, so the commit teams. Yeah, basically it's a site. So all you need to do is you go in, you choose like your age range and then mm. you put in your postal code. Uh -huh. And then it will show you all the services near you. Oh, right. near yeah. centres. Okay, yeah. okay. No yeah. need sing pass lah. No need, no need. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, it's, it's confidential in a sense lah because they only need your postal code ma. Yeah. 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 And, and they're all free. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're all free. All Fantastic free. already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's say I'm socially right I scared to like go down is it also available like online or is there like a video call or like does that uh, depend on yeah so I think it also depends on the services but I think most of the services would offer both a uh, on-site and online option like we deal with some use with social anxiety so they yeah. would rather not turn up in person yeah it causes more anxiety and it's, a, it's a growing problem right uh, yes, I, I think because of COVID, you know, they were so used to like be, being behind the scene, like oh. the screens right. and then, yeah, yeah, and then it's that's just, that's what they're kind of gotten used to. So maybe that's what they're more comfortable with now. Right. Okay. Actually, yeah. yeah, the students that had important academic years during COVID. Yeah, and it was like missing two a years. important component of life. Yeah, so they missed out on school, they missed out on face-to-face -face interaction. So, so what is it like now, like that, like with video calling for for counselling and therapy and all that, like what, what, what is that like? Is it very different? Is it a lot harder? Or is it actually better for the clients or, and for yourself also? Uh, I'm old school, so I would definitely like to see my client face to face. So mm -hmm. ideally, we can invite the clients to come in for sessions. Okay. Yeah, but I think it's also been a good thing. I remember I had this client. So when we were arranging for the session, she said, oh, can we just do text counselling? I said, oh, no, no, cannot. We don't do text counselling. Okay. But uh, we I, we could use uh, Zoom. When I was talking to her at, at the screening, it was like black screen. So she didn't turn on her camera. Uh -huh. She didn't even want to turn on her microphone. Huh? So just... 
It was just a chat box. Oh. Then she typed. Then I talk because I'm like, I So cannot. she did the system. La. She said whether can do chat, you say cannot, must be Zoom. Yeah. <laughs> right? Um, yeah, but I, I guess to me, it's just like the first steps, right? We help yeah. people get comfortable. So, I mean, I think the good thing of this was is that it offers that first touch point where they are comfortable and then when they see, they get a bit more familiarized, they feel more comfortable. So in the next session, she like, uh, she, she was open to using her microphone so talking to me okay, yeah, right. yeah it was still progress. a black it was still a black right. screen yeah. right um and eventually we did move to online mm, yeah right. so that i think that was helpful at least it it you know we talk about pacing and kind of just like being able to meet our clients where they are where they're ready and then hopefully as they get more familiar and they get more comfortable then yeah. they're willing to kind of take steps out and and actually in that sense that's growth as well right yeah. Because right. I do like, let's say right now I come to you and I am telling you like, hey Bettina, I think I might have some anxiety issues and uh, and I experience panic attacks from time to time. Mm. I'm not sure, this is my self-diagnosis. Okay. I'm not sure whether it's first accurate and two, how do I deal with this? So if you talk about, let's say with the panic attacks, mm. right? How often do you get the panic attacks? Maybe once every few months. Yeah. And in terms of severity, so like how, what happens when you have the panic attacks? Like you cannot function, you pass out. I will, my fingers will be very, very cold. I will have cold sweat and then I will hyperventilate for like, say, wow, maybe five to 20 minutes, depending wow. on if I can call someone to help me. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So in that sense of, and how have you been managing this as well? I call my sister okay. or someone that I know will pick up the call, the phone. Okay. Are there like certain triggers? I used to think that there were three triggers. Like, oh, it's because someone said this at work, someone did this to me, blah, blah, blah. So therefore, I have anxiety. But um, I, I'm starting to realise that actually my everyday, day-to-day -day activities right, can trigger anxiety. And that's so scary. And, and I got really quite scared. Like, oh my God just by having the Thai Fat Auntie being rude to me over like small things and mm. I feel like super anxious. Mm. Okay. Yeah. So, Is that a problem? So I think it's good. <laughs> I'm scared now. <laughs> <laughs> She's just diagnosed you on a small time. <laughs> no, like, I mean, actually panic attacks are actually, it's anxiety about anxiety. Okay, I, I don't think I, we want to go too much into this, mm -hmm. right? But like, so if you hear like in terms of the questions, <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, yeah, I, I don't think we should. I'm asking you in terms of like how, what's the frequency, how intense is this, mm. how does this, you know, um, interrupt your daily living. Uh, I think it's good that you got, uh, in terms of you already found um, like some coping to be able to help you manage. Mm. Because I also think that there are certain personalities that are, that are just more anxious. Yeah, does okay? that mean I'm weak? Because no. my personality is like, I just cannot cope with this. Versus a friend who is experiencing the exact same problems with me, but they are fine. But they could be fine because they've just blocked it out and not talk about it and not think about it and shoved it in the corner. And it, it is likely to explode at some point in time. Yeah, so right. my friend... Oh. <laughs> 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 okay, hold up. I love it. I feel like company reputation is still... <laughs> If my own thoughts can represent myself, yeah. I, okay, what, how I always describe it, and which they feel is very, very toxic, okay, is that there are certain things that if I identify that there's nothing I can do about about it now, I put it in a little box, I compartmentalize it somewhere. Okay. I don't think about it until it's time to act, about, okay. act upon it. In my head, right, I feel like it took me many years to be able to do this so that mm. I can function as a business leader. Mm. But it sounds to everyone that has been to therapy before, right, that I am super unhealthy. But <laughs> why, like, like why, what am I supposed to do? You know what I mean? Because with anxiety is fear for the future, correct? So there are a lot of things that cause anxiety. We can have a colleague resign. So okay, resign, there are things we can do, we can hire this person. But then there are a lot of things that we cannot control, like what are the impacts on, on morale. There are things that maybe you can uh, do some company event, like, or try up morale a bit. But then you don't know how it will be reciprocated, you know? Mm. So what if cascading resonation? What if clients start complaining? Mm. These are things that is worry for the future. Very valid because got 30 mouths to feed. Mm. Have to worry one. Mm. Yeah. But nothing I can do already to that level. I put it in a box, I shove it to one side. Ma. Mm. Yeah. What am I supposed to do? Again, we're saying every coping has pros and cons. Mm. So I agree with you. It actually takes skill to be able to compartmentalize, put it aside. 
as long as we just recognize that it is not, I'm just, I'm going to avoid this. I'm not trying to avoid this for forever. So uh, actually in session, sometimes I do that with my clients because they're so, there's so much in there, right? We actually do this exercise where we visualize, we have them put things into boxes to put them away, not forever, but so that it doesn't crowd them in their everyday life. So we're just drawing boundaries. Yeah. Right. But knowing that, okay, there will be at some point I need to go back and I need to pull this out and I look at it. So the next time you come in, this is something you can look at. But right now, can we just put it aside so that it does not disturb you in your daily living? So, yeah. So, okay, honestly, I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing. What's the but? What's the but? <laughs> What's the cons? <laughs> I, I think the, the, the danger is that if you put it away and you just ignore it and you're in denial that it doesn't exist, then that becomes a problem because you're just avoiding it. It's not going to go away. Right, so some of us are yes, just. <laughs> okay, yeah, sorry, yes, okay. Sorry, to be fair, sometimes, yeah. sometimes, but um, the reality is, some of us cope by we just like we just tend to be overthinkers, right? And then you just cannot stop your brain. Yeah. Uh, some people are just uh, they just are able to just cut off, shut down, not think about it. It's actually a bit attachment style related, but we won't yeah. go into that. Okay, uh, but y'all can go, y'all can go and read about it. Yeah, it's very interesting. Okay, yeah. So I think we try not to judge in that sense of saying that this is right, this is wrong because each of us is different. So like you said, you know, maybe you used to be the like, I'm perpetually thinking about it. It took me years to, to mm. kind of like cultivate this skill where I can just box it up temporarily. Um, and then look at it when I need to. Yeah. No, oftentimes those things go away because like, let's say we got anxiety for revenue or anxiety over am I a good leader yes. at some point if I'm a bad leader there'll be nobody left in the company or company go bust yes. you know so then the box comes back to me I don't have to take it out yes. you know? and, the con- and the business grows the box disappears and they say 90% of your worries will not actually come true anyway so yeah. there's that place where you learn to accept yourself as you are at the same time they can exist together the desire to be able to better manage expand my capacity sit with this anxiety learn right. ways to take care of myself sometimes it the problem maybe is a comparison thing. I, I think it should be like that. This is how I think it should be. I should be like this person. And then like, I'm wishing like, he, you, I were you, you were him, he, he, mm. he was you, yeah. right? And we're just not being ourselves. Yeah. So, so but is I that feel- not growth though? For example, me looking at Shams and then seeing, okay, I admire Shams' people skills. Yes. I want to, I hope I'm as good as her. Maybe it's a mindset as well when you compare because mm. you think like, oh yeah, why like, why, why I'm not like sure? I'm so lousy. Why can't I do this? Uh, okay. Right? And then you're beating yourself up which is not really helping you psychologically. Yeah. Right? It's not helping you do anything really productive. Right. It's the same kind of idea, right? Like, yeah, I, I look at that and I, I and admire that. Mm. Um, then how I use that. Right. right. Okay. So I want to learn from her. I can ask her, you know, how she does this. Right. Because both can be true, ma. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Forever feeling can... like you are insufficient. Yes. Yeah. At the same time, you are taking steps to get better. <clears throat> but no matter how good you are, you will feel insufficient. My girlfriend asked me this question recently. Yeah. That is, if it stumbled, like, eh, hey, is it stumbled? You hey, know. Depends, ah. Speed it up first. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> context. We need context. No. no okay. Okay. Wait. Yeah, I say again. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> you were dumbfounded. I cannot stun. Okay. Oh, okay. dumbfounded is correct. Okay. Ah. Uh, uh, she asked me, "Are you a happy person with sad moments, or are you a sad person with happy moments?" Then okay. I think, 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 I, I thought the answer is that obvious. Eh. It's just it's sad with happy moments. Ah. Isn't I, that I always everybody? feel like default is happy. Happy with sad moments. Yeah, then I was surprised. Then after that, I don't know why, but, but we kind of like never talked about it or we separated after that. Lah. Then it just stuck in me. Eh. Then I keep thinking, what's wrong? Like, is that wrong? Like, is there a problem if that is my default answer? <laughs> but because okay. I don't think that that should be the correct answer in my heart. Lah. Yeah. yeah. But that was the answer that I went to straight away. I think my default is like happy with some sad moments. Okay. okay. Yeah. So, so I mean, it's temperament, but it's not a like, this is bad and this is good and this is how it should be because the reality is, who is to say that, right? Because it, it should be you. So if I know that I do tend to be my colleague, right? Um, then I, I also recognize that, yeah, I, I also want to be able to, I can do things to help myself be grateful, be thankful, and I can create more of these happy moments. Okay. Right? And okay. So, so I think it's a balance because they both exist, you're right. It's not one or the other. Temperament does impact. I think family impacts as well, your growing up experiences. With some of my clients who are depressed, sometimes it's like, I'm scared to be happy. It's like, you know, I've been happy for the past week. It's very scary. Mm. I'm very scared that after that, because I go up, my, my job is going to be very low, right? Mm. But to me, I'm just like, please, life up and down, yeah. right? So when you're high, please enjoy the high because you're not going to be here forever. Likewise, when you're down, and I mean, okay, you enjoy can't, the it's, down. it's very hard to <laughs> enjoy the down, but also remember that there will be ups. There's no such thing as, oh, my life is totally happy all the time. 
uh, of course, yes, I think if you're struggling with like depression, then it just feels like, oh, this is forever and I'm going to be like that. But if you ask the people who are, who are in recovery, you know, then they will say, yes, you know, I, maybe part of it is I just learned to be able to be, gra- be grateful for some of the small things, to be able mm. to learn to be thankful and, and these small little things bring me happiness. Can you describe depression? I think everybody's experience of depression would be a bit different. But if you ask me, the picture is like, there's this like, grey cloud over your head. I think that's quite typical. Like it's raining, there's a certain heaviness or sometimes it's a numbness um, Mm -hmm. that people just feel or like it's just, it's super hard to wake up. It's super hard to make it through the day. You know, um, there's very low energy, very little Mm. interest in the things that maybe even used to, they used, that used to bring them joy. Early on in the conversation, you talk about um, if there's a major incident that caused some level of sadness like, or emotions like loss of a loved one, someone passed away or break up with a girlfriend or you fail an exam, you know, something like that. Those are problems whereby there are foreseeable hurdles like, to a certain extent, like, like get another girlfriend, for example, and, and or tell your parents, your parents not angry at you. Then, you know, sometimes the fear is of the parent. Like for me, it was like that. Mm-hmm. I was never worried about my life, how I was just worried like, I disappointed my parents. You know, at least there's a hurdle I can get past. Like. But there are certain things where if people are working and, and I've met many young people, especially men actually, in their late 20s or early 30s and they they just look to the future. Life is okay, they have enough. But they look to the future and they feel like there's just no way I can get out of this rat race. There's just no way. I just have to work and until I die. And that alone feel like there's a dark cloud over their like head. Like hopeless lah. Yeah. You know, but to a certain extent, all of us are in that stage. When we look at problems like this, whereby the truth is you will probably be in the red race till you're 70 or 65. If that is their truth, and then they're going to have big set until they're 65, at which point do we feel like there's depression? Yes. Um, but I would say, you know, like if you were to be diagnosed with a depressive disorder, usually there would already be quite severe sort of like uh, disruptions to your life. Okay. Right? Um, I think what you're talking about sounds a bit more like it's like the hopelessness. Hopelessness, exactly. Yeah, but I mean, to me, I think to a certain degree, um, we all have to make choices, you know? And, And I think then that is kind of what shapes. I think sometimes we feel like the hopelessness because we feel like we have no control, you know, we have no say, we have no choice. Mm. But I think the reality is that we do. Actually, what's important to you lah, you know, mm. uh, is it the money? Is it the prestige? Is it maintaining your a higher and higher lifestyle? Yeah. Then you just need to put in because that's a decision and through your actions, I'm seeing that this is a decision you make, right? Mm. And if it's causing you so much stress, then maybe you need to think about what what are your values? Right. What are your priorities? I think often when clients come in, it's because you're like, I really don't know whether I want to live like this anymore. Yeah. Right. So it needs to be like, to a certain degree, unfortunately, it needs to be like bad enough yeah. that I decide... Maybe this is not how I want to live. But if not, we will just suck it up sometimes. And this brings us to the end of today's episode. Thank you, Bettina, for sharing and being so open about everything. Thank you for having me. And a very big thank you to AIC for being a supporter of youth's mental well-being Mm -hmm. and for being a partner of this episode. If you are someone who needs help or you know someone who needs help, please visit realspace.sg and the links will be down in the description box below. See you in the next one. Bye-bye. It's time for Painting of the Episode! Today's painting is called Feeding Frenzy. It's done by Aaron Yeo. Aaron was a hairstylist before a motorcycle accident that left him paralysed from neck down. Yeah, so he's a quadriplegic and he does mouth painting. So he painted like koi fish in a feeding frenzy for food where the largest koi gets the biggest share and he wanted it to be kind of like mimicking society Mm. and wants to raise questions about fairness and equality. Yes, so if you'd like to see more artworks like this or support the artist, please visit www.shapinghearts.sg. In fact, I, I think a few months ago, I was just trying to explain my father what an echo chamber is. So cute. And my father is just like, no, a bit, feel like knowing all kind. He asked you whether you need to shout into it, is it? No, so he's telling me, <laughs> he's telling me how Kamala Harris sure win. Like, what, Trump getting destroyed. <laughs> and she's leading like crazy. But he gets his news from TikTok. Uh, yeah, where she dominates on TikTok. So okay. I was trying to explain to him the algorithm. He said, yes, but you don't believe I said you. So I, at that time, I, I also don't care who win. I don't know who win, you know what I mean? Yeah. I don't have a hunch who will win yet. Mm. But I just said, I bet you, Lord, because he believes his landslide. Right, right. So that I believe you owe me a hundred bucks. <laughs> <laughs>